What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. You're watching Linda Lately. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to be bougie on a budget and make a cheese board for $40 or less. Let me tell you guys something. If you really want to save money on anything at all, but especially for this charcuterie board, you need to stop by Aldi's because most of these purchases were made at Aldi's at an unbelievable price. In the description box, I will have it listed how much I purchase each individual item for, so you guys can just have that information. But just to let you know, even though these items were bought at Aldi's and Target, the quality is pretty good for the price. This is optional, but I do suggest it. If you want to put some grapes onto your cheese board, then why not? Because if you really think about it, the saltiness and the savoriness of the cheese, crackers, and the meats... It will pair well with something fresh, juicy, sweet, and sour. So that's why I tend to put it onto my boards. And it also makes the board look more interesting and pretty, honestly. Listen, I'm showing you guys how to be bougie on a budget, okay? And let me tell you, if you put crackers on there that taste good, it's going to be a hit. And it also looks really nice on a cheese board too, depending on how you lay it on there. But yeah, don't skip the crackers. FYI, if you're making anything at all that's meant to serve other people and your guests and be a crowd pleaser, then it's supposed to be visually appealing. I don't think the sizes of the cheese is visually appealing. It looks kind of awkward to me, so I did cut them in half just to let you know. All right, let's get into the fun part. Let's start creating this cheese board. This is really making me happy because I used to love lunchables when i was a kid and i feel like this is me making an adult version of like lunchables in a sense but anyway on the far left you can see that i'm placing the red grapes on there just because i am also going to be doing the same thing on the other side just so it looks really nice and fancy that way but also i like to put my grapes kind of in its own little section just because i don't really necessarily like it touching my cheeses or my meats too much because i mean i just don't i think that's weird if you take a bite into a grape and then it tastes like prosciutto for example that's just me personally and i happen to find that it looks really nice when i place it like that because it looks all strategic and whatnot like i put a lot of thought into it and it fills up a lot of space actually next i'm going to be putting my horse and cheese on the top left next to the grape right there and this cheese is bomb it's so delicious it tastes kind of like cream cheese with herbs but probably better this cheese is made in france and you could find it pretty much anywhere but of course like i said the main theme of this video is that i purchased most things from aldi so yes you can find it at aldi's and i'm just gonna place my crackers down next to the horse and cheese kind of in a half circle in a sense just to fill up a lot of space on the board because as you can see even though this board itself is really nice i do not really like the fact that it has a lot of words on there so i try to cover up like the words as much as possible i honestly purchased this cheese board because it was probably like 20 dollars on sale at the time that's just me personally right you never really go anywhere and you see people leave a lot of blank spaces on a charcuterie board so i try to basically pick up on the same concept next i have my rolled up pepperoni and mozzarella cheese that i'm just going to be putting onto the cheese board next to the crackers and boards and cheese on a bias and i'm just gonna stack it on top of each other to make it look like i put a lot of thought and effort into it and i really didn't but it looks nice if you really think about it too, also, cheese boards are meant to be shared with other people and you don't want to give them anything that looks sloppy, so you kind of do gotta do some pre-planning before putting everything together on a cheese board and it does take a little bit of time, honestly, but it really isn't as complicated as it looks, you guys. I encourage you guys to do this at home yourself, honestly, and recreate this look. I mean it is not as intimidating as it looks i'm trying to tell you if anything i feel like it's therapeutic to me making these when i was brainstorming this concept i thought it would be a cool idea to just lay the cheeses flat going down in a straight line as straight as possible obviously and 
these cheeses are pretty good cheeses. It's like Asiago cheese or Gouda cheese, things of that sort. Nothing too crazy because I'm going to be really honest with you guys. I am not a fan of blue cheeses or anything super crazy like that. And I don't think that my friends or family are big fans of those type of cheeses too. So if anything, it makes the most sense to only put things on a board that you feel like your guests will actually eat because otherwise you'd be wasting money, time, and effort. For the salami, I'm folding the piece of meat once in half and then once more to create these triangular shapes. There's a lot of different types of salami, but in general, it should taste salty, rich, fatty, and of course, different salamis have different spices added to it. Therefore, it really all just depends on the type that you choose. We're just going to rinse, wash, and repeat and keep creating these triangular shapes that is going to go on the bottom half of this board. It takes up a lot of space and again, I'm just going to try to cover up as many or as much of the words on the board, period. I basically barely even wanted to show. Just out of curiosity, right? Okay, since you guys are my subscribers and I am curious to know what you would think. If you're going to be making a charcuterie board that's really similar to this one, then what is this best suited for? Is it best for a social event such as like a birthday party, a wedding, baby shower, things of that sort? Or is a charcuterie board to you better for a date night between you and your significant other or a girl's night? things of that sort. If you ask me, I would think it's good for all of the above, but I would love to know your answer, so please comment down below. Something that's really cool about cured meats, whether it be salami, pepperoni, or prosciutto, is the fact that it's sticky. So for the most part, it'll stay in place on the board without barely even moving, and it just sticks together so well just period so you could do a lot of different types of designs with this i've seen people make roses out of the meats things of that sort but we're just going to keep it simple this time around because that's just for another video stay tuned for that i will definitely do that in the future and next to the salami i'm adding even more crackers in a straight line going down because you can never have too many crackers right Again, big emphasis on trying to cover up as many words on the board as much as possible. Last but not least, we are almost done here. I'm just going to be laying down some yummy prosciutto on the left side of the salami, and I'm creating almost a wavy texture or design, if you will. If you've never had prosciutto before, the best way I can describe it is it's very savory and meaty tasting. All cured meats, including prosciutto, have a lot of fat on them, and this is probably my favorite one of them all. Even though it's pretty fatty, it melts right onto your tongue. It's really good. By the way, guys, it's holiday season, so if you haven't felt inspired to go buy yourself a charcuterie board yet, then you might as well go and do it right now. If not that, then it's really good to give people with these type of things. So let's just put that into your mind for consideration for a second okay i always give people cheese boards for presents the very very last thing i'm going to be doing is putting in some great pieces into any gaps so that the board just doesn't look too skimpy or bare or naked the whole point of this is to look bougie and look a lot more expensive than it actually is and i feel like if you fill it up with barely any gaps in between at all then it just makes it look more abundant and full looking if that even makes sense to you guys but you know if you have any remaining grapes i don't see why not and that is pretty much it guys mission accomplished for the remainder of this video i'm just going to continue to be adding some grapes onto the board just seeing what looks good and what doesn't look good if i need to add more takeaway more i don't know just adding my finishing touches and trying to make it as pretty perfect and visually appealing as possible if this video was helpful to you guys in any way shape or form please comment down below subscribe to this channel and remember to like the video and share thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch and please give this a try. I will catch you guys next time for more future videos to come soon.